In the state of Alabama, you either root for Auburn or for Alabama on this day near the close of every college football season. In the city of Birmingham, you can drive down any street, in fact, in the whole state, probably any road, and everybody's inside to watch number four Alabama take on Auburn at Legion Field in Birmingham, where we may have an all-time record crowd today. Here comes the tie. With a record of 8-1-1, one, and one, looking for a share of the SEC championship, possibly looking for a share and a claim on the national championship. And coached by the Bears, Paul Bryant, today with an opportunity to step into a singular position in college football history, coaching more wins than any man ever. A win over Auburn today is all he needs to reach 315 victories as a college football coach, passing Amos Alonzo Stagg. Kid, and that was a challenge, and it was just my nature to accept challenges. 
Tell you what it got me was a nickname that stuck with me for the rest of my life. Bear. Got to date with an angel. Got to meet her at seven. Got a date with an angel. And I'm on my way to heaven. She's so lovely beside me. And whatever beside me. Got an angel to guide me. So I'm on my way to heaven. Soon I hear the bells ring out. And the choir will sing out When the pearly gates swing out How she'll beckon to me I've been waiting a lifetime By this evening at seven Got a day with an angel I'm on my way to heaven well, Later on, I left Moore Bottom, Arkansas Had me a football scholarship to the University of Alabama There were other challenges All kinds Sometimes in a bar tuxedo who is that right there in the white? In the uh, white, who is that? That's Mary Harmon. She's beautiful. She is beautiful. Do you know her? I asked her to dance. She didn't. She turned me down. Why don't you go outside? Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. I think you last about a second. Oh. We'll see about that. I'm Paul Bryant. Hello. Ah, football players. Who needs them? What the hell's going on over there? Bird! Get back in there! I can't get this French thing. Come on, turn around. I'll take care of it for you. Hey, just calm down. You're nervous as a cat now. Hudson, this ain't a big deal. I've been out with girls before. I know, but she's the first lady. Come on, put this on. What's holding up, Jimbo? Ah, don't here. worry about it. Just put it on. Come Thank on, you. like your mama talks. <laughs> One at a time. One, two, three. Yeah, big boy. Like a corset. Let's see. Okay. How do I look? <laughs> no, no, turn around a little bit. Okay, turn around. Just like a Montgomery Ward catalog sent south for approval. She's gonna love you. I hope so. Collected nearly a dollar on the first floor, 65 cents on the second. All together, $2.15. <laughs> there you go, Bear. Jimbo, I love you. Thanks. Sure. Not if I'll be spinning this, but I'd like to hear it around. Yeah, you just have a good time with it tonight. Uh, okay. Like go get him. It was so dark that you had to have two hands to find your nose. <laughs> and we got up early. Whether it's raining, cold, didn't matter. Chopping and plowing is what we did. And the kind of chores make you grow up. Put hair on your brisket. We had a 260-acre farm. That's all. But to me, that's a big plantation. And my pop, as I remember him, he was a big man. He was as wide as a barn door, long as a wagon track. He must have done a good deal of the work. No, ma'am, he was a semi-invalid. It's me and Mama that load the wagon with 
turnip greens and black eyed peas and we'd peddle it. This is in Arkansas. I'm from Arkansas. Morrow Bottom. I'm the 11th of 12 children. And when the four oldest moved away, my mama finally got a sewing room. I was just doing some sewing there. Playing. Ever get afraid? Mm -hmm. Nah. Football's no place to be afraid. Well, unless you're behind. <laughs> afraid you're not gonna win. Oh, well, I guess fear's a good motivator. But there's no time to be afraid when you're out on the field. I mean, if I was a better player, you know. If I was a better player. Oh, but you like are Don a good player. Well, I know I'm good, but nothing like Don Hudson. The man plays the other end. But football is all I ever wanted to do. It's all I want to do now. I mean, but I wouldn't have met you if it hadn't been for football. You know. Oh, quick. Make a wish. Did you make a wish? Well, I was afraid. Do you have any boyfriends? No, just a lot of friend boys. <laughs> a lot of what? You know, just friends. Nobody real special. Oh. What about you? Have a girlfriend? No, I don't. I don't have a girlfriend yet. Oh. <laughs> Wouldn't mind having one, though. You wouldn't? No. I'm just this every day. You're always trying to stay in shape, huh? Yeah. You? Oh, yeah. It, it's still five minutes before I'm due in. You know, the first time I saw you? No. It was even before the dance. It was in the soup store. I think you were staring at me. Like I am now? No. Not like you are now. You sure are pretty. Thank you. Then it was 1935, and I was playing in on one hell of a football team, with Don Hudson at the other end, Riley Smith and Charlie Marr, and a great running back named Dixie Hound. Well, Bama got picked for the Rose Bowl, and we were heading west to be Stanford. Thank you. Thomas, mind if I sit down? Sure, sit down. <clears throat> nice. <clears throat> what's, on your, what's on your mind? Well, I've been wondering. This might sound a little foolish, but you're the only one who can tell me this. Yes, I wanted to know what it felt like when you was riding around up there. Up where? Up on our shoulders. Me and Hudson and... Dixie, after the game, the band playing, the cheering going on, amidst all that. Glory? Yeah, glory. What's that feel like? <laughs> glory. What do you ask? Well, I love football, you know. And, uh, I've been thinking about the future. I don't want to try to stay in the game. God willing. Well, looks like we've arrived at the point of this conversation. How I feel about you going into coaching. Yes. 
have been given serious thought to. Then there's Lauren. <laughs> What I recall the most was the amount of time my nose was in the dirt. But I did manage to hang on to a pass for some pretty good yardage. When it was over, it was us 29, them 13, the Crimson Tide National Champions. saw anything like these Hollywood showgirls. Each one of them smelled like a magnolia factory. Glory, glory. Come on, Coach Thomas! talk to you. Go ahead. How's the game? Some teams ahead. I got a call from Chicago, and you're not going to believe this, but they have offered me. <laughs> Bears have offered me a professional football contract. Congratulations. Well, what do you think about that? Well, is that what you really want to do, play pro football? The coach, when I graduate, Mary Harvey and I are getting married. And I'm going to need a job right then. Well, then this offer from the Bears sounds like it's coming just at the right time. You're only going to offer me $150 a game. Is it nine games? Heck, I wasn't that good a college player, you know that. Tell you what I really came here for, was to get back in that conversation we had on that train going to the Rose Bowl, you remember? Mm-hmm. About coaching. Yeah? What I want to talk about. If you can find some place for me anywhere in the country, I don't care. Like what I was doing in Tennessee, I do it part-time. Why are you so anxious to get away from Alabama? They can use you right here, coaching the guards. Don't you be kidding with me like this? Not kidding with you. I'm talking about coaching full time. Full time? Yep. Well, yes, sir. If I could suggest. I was going to suggest $1,200 a year. dollars a year. Coach, you got yourself a coach. I learned early on that one of the most important things about coaching was recruiting. And growing up in Arkansas had his advantages. How many acres you got here? 180. Oh. Boy. That's good soil. What's your yield? About 16 bushels to acre, give or take a little. You know what? I don't think there's enough potash in there. Now, what I'd like to do is take some of this dirt back to the university and run a test on it. And then put you in a test acre. And next springtime when you harvest, I bet you double your yield. I bet you we triple it. And as a matter of fact, I bet you on Timothy's education that I'm right. Because I know my dirt. I grew up in the dirt. <laughs> Shoot, I bet you all are thinking, now what is he doing here? Is he selling the University of Alabama? 
Jersey Southern Fertilizer. Well, I'm doing a little of both. Now, if it's okay with you, I'd like to get strength and health to shovel up a bucket full of this stuff and let's run it down to Tuscaloosa and you go with me. I think he'd do that. Want to talk some football? Yes, sir. Let's do it. Okay. I made some cookies for you, Paul. Take with you. Good. Looks like you made enough for the whole seven fleas. Your favorite kind. Oh, here. I'm gonna miss you so much. I sure do love you. Oh, I love you too. Well, it won't take long to get settled in. I'll call you. Okay. Wish me luck. Good luck. Be careful. Well, by Pearl Harbor Day, I was married, a father, and on my way to join the Navy. And on the way to North Africa, the ship I happened to be on, we got rammed. And all we did was bob around like a fishing cord, which is when I became one of the best friends the good Lord had ever had. Well, that got me off the water and back into coaching some fine young men down at Navy pre-flight in North Carolina. God bless them. Play like that. Go get them. Come on, you guys, let's go. Eyes to the foot, not to the clouds. Get out. Let's go. Hurt. Down. Side. Hut. Hut. My first civilian job was head coach for the Terrapins. And I talked to my assistant from Navy pre-flight, Herman Ball, into coming with me. Hello, Herman. Oh, my. Have you seen my notes anywhere around here? Always losing my darn thing. I mean, what's the matter with you? Fire at me. Who fired you? The president of the university, Paul. I wasn't told. It's done over my head, behind my back, without me knowing. There was a reason for the termination. One I considered sufficient. You don't get the point. You fired one of my assistants. You can't do that. It's my team. I have to be asked first and only. That point's got to be understood. I want Hummin' Ball reinstated. No. Well, I resigned. Well, it wasn't easy. And I didn't know where I was headed until I got home and found a telegram inviting me to go to Kentucky. Well, we want Kentucky to be your home. A nice house on the golf course. Well, that's fine, but I'm also talking about a five-year plan. Five years is going to take me that long to turn the team around, teach them winning ways. Of course, I could do it in two or three. I don't know. But I just don't want nobody breathing down my neck until five years is up. Mm -hmm. Could I hear some agreement mm -hmm. on that? Well, reason. <laughs> and I also want a new approach to recruitment. A green light. Well, now, you don't even know what I'm going to say. <laughs> well, we're going to have people, uh, alumni, scouting all over this country. Well, that's not what I want, you see. Widespread recruiting is one of the evils of college football. By jerking those boys up out of their homes, pulling them so far away. Uh, I want to restrict recruiting to the state of Kentucky. That's what I'm talking about. That is a must. You like horses, Coach? Maybe we can get you interested in some breeding. How about bowl boys? Bowl bonuses. For me and my coaches, when we take the University of Kentucky to a bowl game. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Why don't we get away from these thoroughbreds, go up the house and get us some hot chocolate with a little something in it, talk about bowl bonuses. Yes, sir. Right. <laughs> Down! Set! Touch! Touch! Oh. Okay, run it one more time. My grandmother can hit harder than that. This is a football. 
I want you to hold on to it like you hold on to your mama. Or like you hang on to your weenie when you're going to the bathroom. I don't want to hear any laughter out of you guys. Get in there and do it again. Go. Run it. Get over the ball and run it again. Hang on to it. Hang on to it. That's me. Run back. You run back here. You don't want to make me mad. We got a bunch of lily liver suckers on this team. Ready? Get up! Get up! What do you want, Billy Joe? Why don't you get back in there and play some football? Oh. Let me have your attention over here. Pipe down. Tomorrow the bus leaves promptly at 2 p.m. The following players are to remain in the dormitory until we return after the game. Wyatt, Wall, Fran, Garvey. Do you want to see me, Coach? Come here, sit down. I understand you gave one of my assistants some lip today. Three hours, full pads, and no water. I, I wanted to know why, that's all. Is that it? That's it. Well, how can that be it when you ain't got to the part about you cussing out one of my line coaches? Let me tell you something. When you show disrespect to one of my coaches, that's like flipping the finger at me. Now, I want your tail out of here. I want you to pack up and get off this campus right now, tonight. Coach, get listen. Out! Hold it. Son, sometimes I think your head's so hollow, you ought to be talking with your hands so the echo doesn't get in the way. Don't you want to be an All-American? Yes, sir, I, I do. Well, then why on earth do you let those things happen? It was dumb. Yes. I'm sorry. Coach, I'm sorry. That can never happen here. Never, ever can that happen here. That must be understood. Sir, I do. One more chance. You want to play for Kentucky? Well, it's up to you, isn't it? Yes, sir. It's better. It's better. You need to gain some weight. Go eat some potatoes and say your prayers before you go to bed. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Building those muscles up. This is Santa's gonna bring you this year for Christmas. Hey. Darling. Oh, you're going to get a football. Don't you want a football? Oh, darling. It's my daddy over there. Uh-oh. You're in trouble. Hey, daddy wants a dolly. Well, no, I want a dolly. Oh, you want a dolly. Here's a present. Oh. For you, sweetheart. I'm going. Okay. Ah. Okay. What do you want for Christmas? A football helmet, a football. Some shoulder pads, a jersey, and some football pants. Well, that's good. Well, honey, what have you been eating? What do you want for Christmas? Baby doll. Baby doll? Okay. Can I have a kiss? Thank you. I see on your beard. Probably is. Okay. Well, everybody's saying it, Paul. Especially all the ladies. You're the best looking Santa in, well, in the state of Kentucky. That's good. Well, I didn't tell him you were recruiting right from the cradle. Don't tell him that. I'm just having fun with these kids. 
Would you take a plate and fill it up with everything you can for me? I will, sir. Thank you. Santa. Coach Allen, how are you? How are you doing, Santa? Buy you a drink? Please. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Oh. Yeah, bud. Ooh. Well, how do you feel about the team? I feel they're doing all right. Uh, this turkey's got some gobble in it, doesn't it? Yeah, you folks built quite a punch. You know, one thing you and I have about today, I think we got them primed in this season good. We might be able to go to a, a ward bowl or something. What do you think? Well, nothing's for sure. I hope you're right. There's one thing that's bothered me. And that's just something bothering the boys. And there's something missing. Harmony. I know it's harmony. And I got a gut feeling way down that they don't like me at all. Well, I don't think they do either, a whole hell of a lot, anyhow. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you something, and I want you to listen to me, Herman. I've got these boys trained. Now I gotta get them to like me. So I need for you to be what I've been. And that's mean as a snake. Hard as nails, and tough as a boot. You can do that. You can drive them in the ground, you can kick ass. You do whatever you want, and I'll back you up all the way. Me, I'll just be old sweet old honey bear. Okay? Yes, sir. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Well, all that harmony worked. Bellinger became All-American, and so did Vito Pirelli, the Kentucky babe. And then there was George Blanda, who could do anything, and Bob Gain, and on and on and on. Offense making you look bad, Irma. Great ball players. Great years. Eight of them. Heck, we won 60, we lost 23, and tied five, and I got my bowl bonuses. And we went to three of them and won them all, including the SEC championship. But there is another game at Kentucky, and it wasn't mine. It was basketball. The great coach Adolph Ruff was king of the campus. The coach Adolph Ruff, our wonderful basketball coach, a brand new Cadillac convertible automobile. Come on out and get your keys, coach. Thank you very much. Thank you. And now, without further ado, to Coach Bear Bryant, a token of our esteem and full recognition of the excellent and high admiration in which he is held. May it light up your life. Come and get it, Bear. It was a terrific life. Sterling Silver, monogram, never failed even in the wind. Coach Rubb gave me a ride in his new car. And I lit his cigar with my new lighter. He dropped me off at home and I went upstairs and wrote out my letter of resignation.
Who is this man? What's he doing here? Well, they call me the bear. And I've come to make you champions. I've come to build a championship football team at Texas A&M. We're going to win some games. And we're going to beat Houston. We're going to beat Tulsa and Oklahoma. What am I? Not forgetting am I even... Did I hear somebody say Texas? You're darn right. We're going to kick their longhorn butts clean back to Austin. Sir, Gene Stalling, sir. Jack Pardee, sir. Bobby Lockett, sir. The Deep Pound, sir. John Watson, sir. Bobby Drake Keith, sir. Lloyd Hale, sir. Good morning. I've been hired to build a football team, and that's exactly what I intend to do. And I have a simple system. I separate the winners from the quitters. A quitting is not losing. Losing is what makes me know I ain't going to quit. It makes me want to fight. It makes me want to try and keep trying to prove that I'm not a quitter. Now, quitters have it easy. Quitters here will have it real easy. They'll be home real quick in some feather bed. Mom will be cooking for them. They'll be dry and clean. We'll be picking those bugs out of their ears. <laughs> the rest of you are going to end up being football players. I'm talking about the not-so-big and the not-so-fast and the not-so-talented. And each and every one of you is going to end up being champions. And we're going to take a bus ride. And we're going to start separating. Does anybody know anything about this uh, dungeon place we're going to? Yeah, I hear it's real pretty up there. It even got a trout stream. Oh, fantastic! Wow. Yeah, practice a little football, spend the rest of the time fishing and swimming. <laughs>
How far do you think we ran? All of Texas and most of Oklahoma. Is anybody tired? No, sir. No, sir. Yes, sir. You gentlemen know what's happening here? You know what's happening here. Once you say, I quit, for the first time, the second time you say, I quit, is a little easier. You find yourself quitting out on the field, you'll be quitting in the game. Then you'll be quitting in the classroom and be quitting on your job. If you're lucky enough to find a woman that loves you, you'll be quitting her and the kids. Quitters are losers. But heck, that's what quitters do. They just quit the rest of their life, that's all. Now I want to know, does anybody here feel like quitting? No, no sir! sir. Well, that's good. I want you all back out on the field. We're going to do some more scrimmage. Right, let's move it. Don't move it. If you're going to be slow on me, you're going to be running 400 yards. Come on, Bobby. You're yes, a leader sir. here. Don't you know, okay? Everybody riding their mama? Stallings, yes, you're riding your mama? Yes, sir. You tell her what a good time you're having here? Yes, sir. How much you enjoying it? Yes, sir. Well, your mama's gonna be proud of you. Thank mama's you, sir. All your mama's gonna be proud of you. Next group, get down here. Line up right here. Get down. All right. Those times like this, I wish my parents never even met. It starts all over again in the morning. It starts at dark, ends at dark. Practice, meetings, more practice, man. I don't need this. Yeah, well, I do. <coughs> Scholarship. I got me a room, three meals a day. Can't walk away from that. I just hope I don't die. I just want you to know that I believe we're getting a little bit better. Son, did you know it's bad luck to have a hat on the bed? No, sir. You better hang it on that knob over there. Want everybody to say a prayer tonight? Yes, sir. We'll get some sleep. We won't hit tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.
just loves a little children All the children of the world Summer why? covered more ground here in one week than we would have in three weeks at College Station. Of course, I'm concerned about those boys that quit. I'm more concerned about the mamas and daddies. But my obligation is to you gentlemen, each and every one of you. You know, it's Saturday, isn't it, Coach? Saturday night? How many of y'all, when you was growing up, went to church to see a show of hands? Well, that's not bad. Well, how many of y'all would like to go to church with me tomorrow? That looks like it. Troy, why don't you come down here and get your names? Give your names to Troy. Bobby Lockett. Bobby Lockett. Stallings, you want to go to church. Pardee. Yeah, Jack Pardee. Gary. Watson, you want to go to church. Watson. Keith. Listen up. Tomorrow yeah. morning, we'll have breakfast. We'll get all dressed up. We'll go down to church right after we practice. So I'll see y'all at breakfast about 6 a.m. Practice and go to church. It's a good day, gentlemen. Tell you there's some about playing football. There's some about a Saturday afternoon and the smell of that grass all churned up. And the way your own blood tastes when it strikes your tongue. And the feeling you get in the huddle and the feeling you get when you score. And when you put on the silks and go out and warm up in front of the fans yelling for you, your mom and dad and that sweet petunia's waving at you, there's nothing like it. And the feeling you have in the dressing room when you've won the game. And your players bragging on the players and the coaches bragging on the coaches. And the way your daddy shakes your hand at the end of the game, it'll be a little bit quicker and a little bit harder. Because you're becoming a man.
Now you've done something that nobody else has done before. You've made a great accomplishment. You've hit a high water mark. You didn't quit. You know some people never get a chance to even play. I tell you, I feel sorry for them. <laughs> We're pretty darn lucky. So let's get back out there and do it one more time. Come on. Yeah! On the eve of the Texas game, they build a bonfire. And it is the biggest bonfire you have ever seen in your life. They must get every piece of lumber in the state to build it. And the tradition says that if it collapses after midnight, well, the Aggies will win the ball game. But if it collapses before midnight, well, bad news tomorrow. It was some time before midnight when the thing finally fell down, but we won anyhow, 34 to 12, and kept winning, went undefeated, won the Southwest Conference Championship. Now maybe that says something about bonfire. I don't know. It was truly the best of times when Conrad Tracy, Marks and Taylor, and John David Crow, the only Heisman Trophy winner I ever got to coach. It was one winning season after another, and a man coming home to his family a winner. Well, I tell you, that's the best time of all. Listen to this. While swashbuckling halfbacks and harrow-bodied quarterbacks electrify crowds, Someone's at the door. Why don't you go find Mama? Uh. Please don't let him say nothing, Mama. I'll try. But you know how he feels about you going out with his players. Football season's over. <sighs> Dear, it's never over. Now, turn around here. Let me look at you. You sure I look OK, oh, Mama? Oh, you look so pretty. Are those flowers for me? No, sir, they're from May Martin. May Martin? Yes, sir. Well, she'll be down directly. Yes, sir. Would you have a seat, Phyllis? Thank you, sir. Here. What on earth? All right. I'm sorry, sir. It's all right. It's all right. Touchdown. You didn't cut your butt, did you? No, sir. Well. Why don't you two run off and have a good time? <clears throat> I'll pick up the pieces. That's what daddies are for. And what I'm saying, in simplest terms, uh, what I am talking about is national recognition. Yeah, thank you, John. National recognition. I am talking about pride in the school, pride in us being alumni. I am talking about a certain note of triumph when our name is called. But gentlemen, right now, the Crimson Tide is a trickle.
sore than a shoat with a cut snout. We're laughing stock. Yeah. Enrollment is down, morale is zero. We're a joke. Buster and I were just talking about what we could do to turn all that around. That's right. We got one of our own boys that's doing one hell of a job down in Texas A&M, Paul Bryant. Forget it. Oh. Nothing's going to move Paul away from Texas. Bama is his school, Aubrey. That's we right. can't afford him. Well, now, I know that the mayor is a practical man. I grant you that. But he is a sentimental man, too. Wouldn't you say? You see, you mentioned to him a pretty good jump in his style of living. And you mentioned to him returning to the bosom of our family, where he'd be loved. And folks are going to make over him important for the bear. He'd listen. We want him to know our interest and our desires. We want him to be the next football coach of the University of Alabama. <laughs> Gentlemen, the bear. The bear. <laughs> the bear. The bear. <laughs> I just want you to know that the only reason I'm leaving Texas A&M go to Alabama is that mama's calling me I'm going home go stringer don't let up on me well, going to Alabama meant leaving the winter but heck that's where my heart was and I just couldn't resist the call slob here who thinks he's a football player to be in the rec room in exactly 15 minutes and then we'll decide whether or not there's going to be a tomorrow obvious to me why Alabama's only won four games in the last three years. You have absolutely no pride or self-respect. I just went through this dorm. I just can't believe what I saw. Now, this has all gone on in the past, but it's going to stop now. Fact is, I'm going to come back in the morning to this dormitory, and this dorm better look like a dormitory. I expect each and every one of you to conduct yourselves with class. Now, 
if you don't wish to make this choice on your own, you'll find yourselves packed up and moved out by lunch tomorrow. You're not this town's team. You're not the university's team. You ain't even the state's team. Because they don't want you. You're my team now. I want it painted, I want it wallpapered, and I want new drapes. I want a new TV set for the rec room. I want air conditioning, and all the furniture is torn up and broken. It has to be replaced. And they will just ruin it all over again. No, sir, they won't. I guarantee you they won't. Paul, they call it the ape dorm for a reason. Let's start with the drapes. Now you're starting out on a road, and you don't know where it's going to take you. But I tell you, one goal you'll reach if you listen to me. If you do the things I tell you. If you follow the program I give you. And if you work at it the way I demand you to work at it. Now, if you do these things and believe in me and believe in yourselves, then by the time you graduate, you will be national champions. count on it. That's a promise for me. Coach, I got a good feeling about this one. You do? Yeah. You got a good feeling about this. No, Paul. Can I have one like this? You already had one like this. I have one like this. Let's try this one right here. Okay. I think you'll like this one, Coach. This looks like some of man where if he was hiding. Try it on. For me. I like it. It looks good. Yeah. You look real good. Yeah, I do, don't I? Yes, you do. Shall I put it in a box for you? I'll wear it. Okay. Want to get up? Something for you? No. No, I'd rather go to lunch. No, no, no! That's what I want to see! That's how you play defense. That ain't how you play defense. You're just titty bumping. I'll show you how you play defense. I want you to block me. What's the matter, son? You got monkeys in your ears. I want you to block me. Coach. Get down there, son. Pat it down, boy. There you go. Get down, son. Ready? Hit. Now that's defense. That's defense. You think you can do that? Can you do it? Say yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, I want you to play like you practice like you're six points behind. Get in here and play some defense. My God. Coach! Block me. Okay, son. I'll block you. Count it down for me. Hit! <laughs> that's it. Now that's it. I want you to get in the habit of that now. Oh, don't it? That's what it is. That's what it's all about. I'm proud of you. Yeah. Hey! God, dog. Get up, get up, get up, get up. Hey, hey. I got a dog at home with more class than this, and he's a straight. Now, you think you can get back to work, Mr. Phi Beta, Captain? Yes, sir. Good. Take it out on Auburn.
Evening, Coach. What are you doing here? Waiting to see you. Why didn't you knock? I figured you were busy. Didn't want to disturb you. If you want to visit us, I figured you would have left the door open. Come on in. You shut the door. So what's on your mind? A lot of respect for you, Coach. I, uh, apologize for what happened. Well, thank you, Pat. I accept. You like a soda? Yes, sir. Trammell, you're pre med, aren't you? Yes, sir. I notice your marks are pretty good. Thank you. Well, I'm serious about being a doctor. Ever since I was a kid. Uh, you gonna go right to med school or uh, no time out for pros? Or... Uh uh. Right to med school. Right to med school? That's wonderful, son. That's wonderful. You know, I'm glad we're getting this chance to talk, because I got some things on my mind that I'd like to discuss with you. You don't do a whole lot of right out on the field as a quarterback. I mean, you got no speed, you're not quick, your blocking's pitiful. And those flat, hard passes you throw could be intercepted by Sister Mercy on a bad day. Now, you know, you know all this. Yes, sir, I do. But you're a hell of a quarterback, Trammell. And I'll tell you why. On a third and sixth situation, you'll get seven. Nine times out of ten, because that's what has to be done. That's my belief, son. You're just a natural winner. That's good to hear. Well, you hear this. Out on that field, you, you, are the boss. You're running the team. You're the general. Now, together, we're going to win a lot of football games. But you remember, it's me out there. And it's you. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Good. Oh, I'm glad we had a chance to talk here. You need to ride home. No, sir. Mary Harvey's gonna kill me if I don't get there, sir. <clears throat> Let's go out together. supposed to be where the ball is, not rubbing titties with the secondary. You thought I was there? Bullshit! Bullshit, you were there. God damn it, you get yourself two steps on that satchel ass Yankee, or I swear to God I will drop kick your butt the hell out of the stadium. On two. Ready? Fight! Fight.
quick with your eyes, and you're quick with your hands and your feet. But you got to learn to be quick mentally. Be prepared for a good game, a poor game, a hostile crowd, sunshine, wind, rain. And be better than you can be, than to reach inside and be better than that. And have poise and confidence. No penalties. It takes a lot of courage to go back the huddle and walk away from a pushing and shoving contest. And keep your head. If you won't be beaten, you can't be beaten. And that'll work for you for the rest of your life. You understand? It'll work all the way through life. I want to just kick the heck out of these awful tigers. You know, we got a lot more class than they do because they wear Tom McCann shoes. <laughs> Joe Willie Namath was the best natural athlete I ever coached. He could bullet past 70 yards and run like a deer. Well, his junior year, he got in a little trouble, and what that was don't matter. He was covering for some friends, and I knew it. But Joe never made excuses, and I never asked him for any. You're letting down your coaches. You let down your teammates. You let down yourself. And I feel you got to be shown you can't do what you want when you want and still be a part of this football team. Now, if I let you play, I'd have to resign. I couldn't live with myself. Now, this is the hardest thing I've ever had to do. But I have to do it. I have to. Suspend you from the football team. I'm sorry. Next year, Joe came back, and I am proud to say he made All-American. We are witnessing the first black co-ed entering the University of Alabama. Governor Wallace has arrived to protest this intrusion by the federal government into Alabama's there you go, right coach. to self-determination. Dodge and ease. Alabama is becoming the focal point of the civil rights struggle. Times are changing, aren't they? They sure are, Coach. Cool. Took long enough. You right about that. Well, we got women in there. Let's go get some men. Yeah. Hope you understand. I'm making the team in Alabama. We should be playing in. Uh, Georgia, Louisiana, Mississippi, and Texas. What do you think will happen? Well, to be honest with you, Mr. Jackson, I don't know. And this is all due to me, too. But I do know that your son's going to be treated as fair as any other player at Alabama. And I don't treat my boys alike because each one of them is different. I treat them fair. Coach Bryant, why are you picking me to be your first black player? Well, son, I've sent black players to Penn State, to Michigan State, to Nebraska, to Ohio State. Not because I didn't want them in Alabama. Because times was different then. Now, I'll admit it's taken too long. Times are different now. And I ain't looking for black players or white players. I'm looking for football players. Oh, he said, uh, Barris, I don't want you to do me a favor. Don't you tell them folks I pulled you out of the water to keep you down. Listen. He said, I will. If you won't tell them folks in Alabama, I can't walk on the water. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong? Right? Telephone. Telephone. Barris, I don't want you to do me a favor. Don't you tell them folks I pulled you out of the water. Hey, Coach Bryant. Who is <laughs> Now, okay, who is it? Yeah, I think it's best no names are mentioned. I'm from Birmingham. You know, you and I always get together when you're in Birmingham. You know me. Yeah, sure I do. What's all this seriously about? Now, listen to this, okay? Saturday evening post. Oh. Well, they are claiming that you and Wally Butts of Georgia conspired to fix last year's game. Wait, conspire to fix a game? 
You gotta be kidding. We won that game 35 to nothing. Tell me where. Going to what? Listen to me, Paul. I've been connected to the University of Georgia for 24 years. Asking me to take a lie detector test is doubting my word. How can I work here anymore? I have to resign. No other way. Hmm. What about you, Coach? Well, I'm not going to resign. I'll talk to you later. What you have to know is, what you have to understand is, not only are these charges shameful to myself and the university, but I tell you, I grieve when I think of how they reflect on you. I stand here sick to my soul because of the harm that they will bring to you your honesty, and to your integrity. I truly agree. For each of you young men whom I cherish as I would one of my own sons, I swear by everything that a man holds dear to himself in one lifetime that these charges are false. Now, this morning, I have volunteered to take a lie detector test. <laughs> and with its results and your prayers and the good Lord willing, all of this will pass. Grizzly bear. Yes, sir. Where was that? That was at the Lyric Theater in Fort Dallas, Arkansas. Are you acquainted with a person named Wallace Butts? Yes, sir. You were the tenth of twelve children, is that correct? Eleven. Did you conspire with Coach Butts to rig a football game? No, sir. You have a daughter named May Martin? Yes, sir. And a son named Paul? Yes. Have you ever bet on a football game for or against a team of which you were the coach? No, sir. Did you bet on the outcome of the 1962 Georgia game? No, sir. Is that about it? Yeah. 
you, sir. Thank you. Well, the man who ran the test said it was the most negative one he ever saw. Needles never moved a fraction. And I was so mad, I sued that magazine and settled for a whole lot of money. And as fate would have it, they got put out of business. Then I settled down to coaching some football. And that year, we won the national championship. And the year after that, too. Things all wound up here. I can't. The well, truth is, I wasn't much good at school either. <laughs> That's what I heard. Something I want to know from you. What do you think about me being a professional coach? Aren't you getting paid for what you do now, Grandpa? Well, yeah, they're paying me, but I mean, a coach that coaches a team plays for money. Coaching. Where would you do that? Florida, a team called the Dolphins. Being leaving Bama, wouldn't you? Yeah. That's right. I don't understand why you'd want to do that. Well, there's lots of reasons, son. More things. Get more things for the family. What kind of things? Well, we could get that big old fishing boat we talked about. One that goes out on the ocean and we sleep on it. One thing I never told anybody, sleep on the ocean is one thing I don't think I like to do. Well, you and me just spend a lot more time together. How? If you'd be in Florida and I'd be in Bama. You're asking me, Grandpa, and I'll tell you. If it was me, I wouldn't go off and leave you. Not for more things or more boats or anything. No, sir, not for nothing. Bama's my home. You're getting pretty good at that backhand cast in there, boy. Practice makes perfect. <laughs> uh. And it was 1969 and 70. Winning years, but close. Six and five, both of them. Not good enough for the Bama powerhouse, and I tell you, it made some folks real panicky, myself included. No. No, no, cut back. Cut back. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, put him on. Thank you. Hello, Daryl. Nah, nothing I'd like to share. I'm just watching Auburn. How's Edith? Good. Oh, she's real fine. She's good. Listen, Daryl. Understand that you're running a new formation this year. Uh-huh. Well, what's it all about? Four running backs. Well, Daryl, it just so happens I happen to be in Texas next week. Now, maybe if you have time, I could swing by Austin and you could explain it to me. Well, what's it called? Wishbone. Okay. I'll see you next week. Wishbone. I wonder what he's up to. <clears throat> God knows I need a wishbone for this damn thing. Help you? Circus in town? Close practice, sir. Huh. Uh, Nashville Banner. Sorry, sir. No press. Coach Bryant's orders. What the hell you mean? I want to talk to the coach. He'll talk to you. Practice, sir, but no one's allowed. What do you mean, no one's allowed? He can't do that. That's against the Constitution. In Alabama, Coach Bryant is the Constitution.
again. Do it again. Keep the ball right there. Move it down the field. I want to see you move it down the field and drive it down their throat. Everybody take a deep breath. It's just about showtime. You're gonna get a chance to go putting on your act for a whole lot of people. Now your mamas and daddies is who you're gonna be putting it on for first. Coaches and teachers, that's another. Schoolmates. Let's not forget the sweethearts. Probably gonna be more people out there than you've ever seen in your life. Not to mention the millions or so people sitting at home watching it on national television. Now I just want you to roll your sleeves up and go out there and have a good time. And put a smile on your faces. And then hit somebody and knock them down, then help them up, then tell them you'll be right back. Show your pride and your class. Everything will work out fine. I promise. Let's go ahead and play some football. <laughs> Beat Southern California 17 to 10. That wishbone was a thing to behold. I gotta thank old Daryl for that one. Helped us to a near perfect season, 11 and 1. And I was real proud of the boys as the next 11 years, we were eight times Southeast Conference champions. And we were national champions in 1973, 78, and 79. game I ever coached was a big one, but this one against Auburn in 1981 would be my 315th win. A landmark record, people would say, breaking Mr. Stagg's famous record. It's kind of a strange feeling. It's like everyone there and the rest of the country would be watching the scoreboard instead of the game. Well, they kept trying to lift me up on their shoulders. You know all that glory stuff. But I put a stop to that on account of my back was bad and my legs were hurting. And glory, shoot, if I could have, I was so proud of that team. I'd have yeah. carried them all off the field on my shoulders. That's all our time for tonight. Folks, thanks for looking in. We'll see you next week. Good night, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Good. That footage is something else, wasn't it, coach? Well, how was that? Oh, you were great. You were great. You came right through. My fans love it. Oh, they're going to love it. They're going to love it. You help me off with this. I hate myself. Well, what's the matter, Coach? You okay, Coach? Yeah, I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. I said I was okay. Everybody back up. I don't need no water. Okay. I just got a little funny feeling in yeah. my chest, that's so. all. Yes, I'm sure. Can I help you out? You can. I appreciate it. See you later. See you, Coach. See, See you next week, sir. She get me the car.
What'd they say, coach? He said what all doctors say, nobody lives forever. They all say that, and that keeps them from hedging on their bets. Something serious? Nah, just getting old, feeling tired, I'll get it. And too much pressure? I guess. Could be. Why don't we go to Stafford? I need a haircut. They know. <coughs> you don't know something, Billy. Lately, I've been getting a feeling that there's something I've been missing. And something I've been meaning to attend to, but I just ain't taking the time for it. The days just keep flying by. What's missing, Coach? Well, I ain't been taking time with the Lord like I used to, for one thing. I can't see how you can say that, Coach. But the way you help the way you do things for other people, the way you guide those young men, that's the Lord's work, don't you know that? But yeah, but there's more to it than that. Now, I want you to listen to me, Coach. You inspire people to do things they never thought they could do. You teach them right and wrong and righteous ways with your guidance. Now, what more could a man want to be in the eyes of the Lord? I hope you're right. No, I'm right. Are you sure you're right? <laughs> Wasn't until the end of next season that I announced my retirement, making this my last game. There is an air of electricity at Liberty Bowl Memorial Stadium, the Crimson Tide of Alabama under Paul Bear Bryant, and the Fighting Illini of Illinois under Mike White. The teams are about ready to come out onto the field. A jam-packed crowd, the toughest ticket in Memphis in many a year. We're gonna run that back, we receive. <coughs> it's pretty cold out there. The showtime's right on us, and it's a big one. We got two football teams with big football tradition, and we're going to be playing on national television. Now, I want everybody here. I mean, coaches, quarterbacks, signal callers, trainers, everybody, to play this game and ever down like we're behind and that we refuse to be beaten. I want you to play every down like it was the last down in your career. Now, let me admit that. I want you to play every down like it's the last down in your life. Now, you do that. And you may not win. I think you will. But you may not. You do that, you get on that bus. 10 years down the line or 20 years down the line. Each and every one of you can be proud. And those other people that see you, they'll be proud too. And I'll be the proudest one of all. Ooh, it don't get easier. Life don't get easier. The game don't get easier. It gets tougher and tougher. You take it from me. But show your class and show your pride. Roll up your sleeves, go out there and hit somebody, knock them down, and help them up. And tell them you'll be right back. Let's go put some points on the board. Let's go play some football. Yeah! The emotion is riding high. Here comes the Crimson Tide of Alabama for the last time for head coach Paul Bear Bryant. It began the first Liberty Bowl in 1959. 
for him as head coach. It will end tonight here in the Liberty Bowl. And let me tell you something, fellas. These guys are sky high here at the Liberty Bowl in Memphis, Tennessee. Here he comes. The players call him the man. Paul Bear Bryant, 322 wins as a collegiate head football coach. Here comes the fighting Illini. The legend, 69-year young Paul Bear Bryant. His final game, as we have a piece of history here at the 24th Annual Liberty Bowl, and as you see, it is jam-packed, a total sellout. Bear Bryant for the final time. Alabama kicking off, Illinois receiving. Boot taken at the nine yard line, back up to the 20, up to the 36. Liberty Bowl halftime pageant. subject, except ten minutes after the game is too late. Next day, it's too late. Now, these next 30 minutes 
are gonna be with you for the rest of your life. Consider that. And then go out and play your game. Coach is gonna go over your offensive and defensive mistakes. We're gonna get rid of those distractions and we're gonna go beat Illinois. Time, my friend, 
it don't slow down and dreams they never wait if one should stop and call your name don't tempt the hands of fate reach out with every breath you take and don't you let it go the road will lead you back again back home Go, and soon we're growing old So when that rainbow shows its face Go on and take a hold No matter where I find myself I'll own the peace of mind No matter where the sun goes down there's bound to come a time when I'll be home again. I'll ride the wind again and find my way back to your door before the tide comes rolling in. And with a smile, I can say I made. Friends along the way And I'll be home again Oh